My name is Ben Lebwal. I'm a gastroenterologist and the director of clinical research at the Celiac Disease Center at Columbia University. Uh, and I'd like to speak to you briefly about a study that we recently published in JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association, on the topic of celiac disease and mortality risk. The rationale for studying this um, subject is that celiac disease can be associated with a number of other conditions. There is a somewhat increased risk of certain kinds of cancers, uh, of other autoimmune conditions, of heart disease. And really the question is, does this all add up to any change in life expectancy? We know that the great majority of people with celiac disease live long and healthy lives. Um, and to really measure any impact on that ultimate endpoint on life expectancy or longevity, you need to study large groups of people. We also know that this is the kind of study that can only be done uh, in a setting where we can track everyone from cradle to grave. Uh, we can't study this kind of question adequately in a referral center such as the Celiac Disease Center at Columbia, um, uh, really anywhere in the United States. Uh, we needed to collaborate uh, with our scientific partners at the Kar Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, this is a group led by Jonas Ludvigsen, who's a professor there at Karolinska. Uh, and he has put together a very large population-based database, basically consisting of everyone in the country with celiac disease followed for the long term. Uh, and so uh, in this study, we tracked... Uh, more than 49,000 people with celiac disease. And this was defined as having an intestinal biopsy that showed the kind of specific damage that we see in celiac disease. Crucially, this is a study of celiac disease in the modern era. Um, the majority of uh, people in this data set were diagnosed after January 1st, 2000, including nearly 25% who were diagnosed after January 1st, 2010. And the reason that's important is celiac disease has really changed over time. This used to be considered a rare condition. Uh, and as increased awareness has led to increased diagnosis rates, uh, it's very possible that more of the people we're diagnosing now have more mild forms of celiac disease. Not only that, it's possible that with increased access to gluten-free food and other gluten-free options, it's possible that adherence to the gluten-free diet has gotten better. And maybe that uh, will impact any long-term risks. And so among these 49,829 patients, uh, they were each matched to up to five controls, people from the general population of Sweden who were the same age, gender, uh, uh, around the same calendar year and region within Sweden. We followed them through the end of 2017 and they were followed for uh, a median or an average of 12 and a half years. Overall, when comparing people with celiac disease to that matched control population, we did find that there was an increased um, mortality risk. Uh, the measure that we use is called a hazard ratio, and what we found that the ratio was 1.21. One could call that a 21% increased risk, but really it's more practical to think in terms of absolute risks. And so if you take 100 people without celiac disease and follow them for 10 years over that course, 8.6 of them will die. And if you take 100 people with celiac disease and follow them over the similar period of time, 10 years, 9.7 of them will die. And so it's a very small signal that we're seeing, but it is a signal. And when we sliced it in different ways, when we looked at just young people, for example, we still found that signal. Uh, when we only looked at the most recent uh, time era, uh, 2010 through 2017, we still saw that signal. Uh, we looked at a, a couple other um, analyses in this paper. For example, uh, instead of comparing the celiac people to general population controls, we compared each one to his or her siblings among those that weren't only children, uh, siblings who didn't have celiac disease. Uh, and again, we saw that signal, a slight but significantly increased um, mortality risk. Uh, we did that sibling analysis because that's a way to control for very difficult to measure uh, factors. With one's siblings, one shares half one's genes. 
uh, and a lot of one's early environment. The fact that we're still seeing a slight increase in mortality risk, even when comparing people to their siblings, suggests that there is something about celiac disease itself and not some unmeasured variable, uh, whether it be genetic uh, or environmental. Uh, we also looked at mucosal healing, that is to say, uh, whether someone heals on a follow-up biopsy done some years after an initial uh, diagnosis or biopsy. We found that um, more than a quarter of people in Sweden had persistent villus atrophy, that is to say, persistent damage. But we found that there was no difference in terms of mortality risk among those who had ongoing damage compared to those who healed. Uh, in a way, this is reassuring news. There uh, are a fair number of people, not just in Sweden, but in the United States and worldwide, uh, who have ongoing damage. And while that has been linked in prior studies uh, to risk of lymphoma and fractures, um, it appears that overall mortality is not affected. It appears that after one is diagnosed and starts a gluten-free diet, even if one fails to heal and one has ongoing damage, maybe due to ongoing inadvertent gluten exposure, it doesn't appear to be a big enough problem to be causing a signal to appear where we're seeing any issue in life expectancy. So the takeaway is that celiac disease is clearly a serious condition. It impacts the ultimate endpoint that epidemiologists study, which is life expectancy. But the good news is the degree of impact is not very large. It's measurable. It's there. It's serious. Um, but for the individual person with celiac disease, they can rest assured that after being diagnosed and starting a gluten-free diet, the great majority does very, very well. This is a study uh, that uh, was sponsored by the Swedish Research Council, the Lewis and Gloria Flanzer Philanthropic Trust, and the Celiac Disease Foundation, of which I'm the recipient of a Young Investigator Award. I was very grateful to have this opportunity to work with my collaborators in Sweden, and I'm grateful to the Celiac Disease Foundation for allowing that to happen. We're hoping that future studies will help unpack why we're still seeing this uh, small but significant change in life expectancy, specifically looking at cancer risk um, and other morbidity uh, issues that may affect quality of life. Ultimately, our goal is to help people living with celiac disease, to help increase awareness and diagnosis rates, but also the management and make it better for those who are diagnosed uh, with celiac disease and uh, who are um, prescribe this gluten-free diet. Um, so uh, I appreciate the opportunity and uh, hope to have the opportunity to answer questions and discuss this paper and others uh, with the community.